the thing for our convocation, amen, this upcoming week is preserving the old and preparing the new. Preserving the old and preparing the new. Say that with me. Preserving the old and preparing the new. Preserving the old and preparing the new. And preparing the new. Amen. The sub thing is under the mantle anointing. Amen. Preserving the old in our upcoming thing for our convocation deals with the calling of Elijah as one of the prophets of Israel in 1 Kings 19.19. And preparing the new deals with the instructions of the Apostle Paul being given to Timothy in a multitude of spiritual charges. The thing, amen, that I want to bring forth to your attention right now is that we neglect to prepare. We neglect, amen, to make preparation for anything that would come in our life in the future. And if we don't, amen, take time to prepare anything for new, but that is coming for our children, we won't preserve, amen, the things that have passed. God is calling us to, amen, do something for our future and do something for our past. Even though you can't change the past, amen, you sure can prevent the past. That can get no help in you. From happening again. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, trying to get a different result. You will not get a different result doing the same old things over and over and over again. Whatever you do over and over and over again, you're going to get the same result. If the result that you have been getting for the last three, five, or ten years is not working, there has to be a change. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to change, then you got to prepare for it. Amen. We'll see, amen, that the charge here that Paul is giving to Timothy, he gave him a multitude of spiritual charges. Charge here meaning the, es the ecclesiastical jurisdiction of a parish or the overseer of a district that has been committed into the hands of a clergyman or a clergywoman. A person or thing committed to the care of another. The one charge that Timothy is using here, it is defined, amen, as giving one charge over something. Giving one charge over a jurisdiction. In 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, Paul encourages the young man by saying, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Buddha. Right. Uh. That is in Krishna. Uh. That is in Muhammad. Uh. That is in Allah. Right. That is in your job. Right. In Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Why? Because we put, amen, hallelujah, our confidence, amen, and we're strong in different areas of our life. And the only area that's going to bring you, amen, into strength through the grace of God is in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the only way, amen, you're going to be strong. And if you want a strong finish, you got to have a strong faith. Tell somebody, if you want a strong finish, you got to have strong faith. He not only said that, but in verse 2, he said, As the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see, everybody, that people can't endure nothing nowadays. People don't want to make that endure anything. But those that men that look good holy, those that look godly, those that live a righteous life, you shall suffer persecution. The Bible declares so. So he is uh, uh, encouraging Timothy to be strong. Be like a soldier. Endure some hardness. 
that's going to come times when you, you're going to have to amen, be able to withstand something. You know, there's going to come times you're going to have to fight. There's going to come times that you're going to have to amen, learn how to survive when there's nothing to survive on. How do you survive in that on nothing in that that is left to survive on? The same way you stand and be strong when you have the all to stand. Hallelujah.
give him a reprieve. Because he was in prison all those years. But no, 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 no. They're going to try him. Because he went air long. Oh my God. Hallelujah. There are some people in the church right now in the body of Christ. You're going to air long. Yeah, yeah. You think, well, they ought to have mercy on me. You're going to air long. Well, I think they ought to, hallelujah, bless, help me out. You're going to air long. Well, I think they ought not be too hard. You're going to air long. Well, they're just too hard on me. You're going to air long. Amen. And the world can see it. We see it in the church. People will not, amen, stand up, amen, and do what God called them to do. Some people will not endure nothing. God wants somebody that's going to be real. God wants somebody that's going to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And if you permit, amen, the gospel in the hands of men that won't stand for the truth, then they'll take the gospel, amen, and they'll destroy what God, amen, has called they will destroy what the gospel has been sent forth to do. The gospel has been sent forth to heal, to set captive free. The gospel has been sent forth, amen, to make men aware of their sins and bring forgiveness unto salvation. The gospel has been sent forth to call you out of darkness in order and all this way. But if you don't have anybody that's going to stand for the truth, then they'll take the truth and try to make it alive. Oh my God, I got to move, I got to move. I want to deal with that with preserving the old. Uh, can I deal with preserving the old? Oh my God. Because it does not matter how anointed you are. It does not matter how much you are called. It does not matter how much you think that you are God's woman or God's man. It does not matter how much it has been committed into your hands. And how many members you have in your church. God wants us to be committed and to do what He called us to do. Whether you have 10 people in your church or whether you have 10,000 people in your church, if you don't be careful, you'll start doing what you want to do. You'll start doing it in your own thing. I can't get no help in here. You'll start walking in and out of the will of God into your own will. Amen. But God is calling us to walk in His will. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. In our text, amen, in 1 Kings 19, 19. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to turn there. 1 Kings 19, 19. Uh -huh. It reads this to us. So he departed death and found Elijah. The son of Shep, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. Verse 20. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. And said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew it and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Mm. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Father, give us, Lord God, clarity of thought in thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Leading up to this point, Elijah had many experiences with God. Amen. And not only did he have many experiences with God, but he also, amen, encounter, had encounters with the angel of the Lord. In my studies, amen, anytime you see in the Old Testament the phrase the angel of the Lord is talking about Jesus himself. And we see that in time of great degradation, misconduct 
of the kings of Israel, the kings of Judah and the surrounding kings, in the form of false worship through idolatry, Elijah stood as a voice of God to the nations of Israel, Judah, and Samaria. In chapter 19, verses 1 and 3, we find Elijah, amen, receiving news from a messenger from the palace where King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel reigned. Elijah challenged Ahab and his 450 false prophets, and I believe the 400 false prophets that ate at Jezebel's table. He called them out. Amen. And he challenged them before all of Israel to see whose God was real. Was Baal real or was the God of Israel real? Since we're still going through that same scenario. That's right. Trying to find out whose God is real. That's right. That's right. Is the God, amen, of this world real or is the true and living God real? We find out, amen, that we put our trust in things that are not pertaining to the word of God, more so than we put our trust in the things which do pertain to the word of God. Amen. If it's in this Bible, amen, I am expected to do it, to walk by it, amen. to live it. Amen. If it's not in that Bible, don't put it on my shoulders. But we want to take the other false, amen, understanding. Everything that's in the Bible, we don't want to do it. But the stuff, amen, that's not in that, that's what we want to do. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll do stuff, amen, because we desire, there is a desire in our flesh. There is a hunger, amen, and a thirst in our flesh. Yes. God said we must hunger and thirst after. Right. Uh -huh. We want to hunger and thirst after everything else, amen. But Elisha was a man that stood flat foot and said, who is the true God? If it's serve him. But if it's the God of Israel, then we'll serve him. He said, get together all your men. Good Lord, oh my God. Amen. He made a challenge to the king of Israel. That's why you got to know, amen, in whom you believe. You got to know that God called you. You got to know that God anointed you. You got to know that God appointed you. Was that what God tell you to know? You are going to your own power, your own will, or your own
son of the king asked, why are you back so early? Yes, yes. He said, a man stopped for us anyway. Told us everything you told us. <laughs> you see, God will reveal. I can't get myself in here. God will reveal to the man and woman of God. Judah. 
He had a servant and he left his servant there. And he ran on into the wilderness and he hid himself. Tommy came and he was a cave dweller. Isn't it something when you leave your two-story house to live in a, 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 a shelter, a holy shelter? Because you running from stuff. What you running from? What you running from? Do you not know that you have an inheritance? Do you not know that God has blessed and that his grace and the to fall upon us? But well, we don't want to accept it. We want to do what we want to do. And that's what we're running from. We're running from God because we want to do our own thing. I don't know what you're running from. God is calling you to righteousness and you're running from it. Been calling us for me all a long time. And you're still running. You would rather live in a cave. You would rather live beneath your privilege. You would rather live, amen, live in a place that God did not call you to live in rather than do the righteousness, walk in the righteousness of God. So he dwelt in a cave. And God said, Elijah, what are you doing here? What he said. God is asking some of us that same question. What you doing here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you are in a place you know you ain't where you're supposed to be. And God is saying, what you doing here? You're doing stuff in there, you know it's not in the will of God. It's some cocktail, lock you down, you can't get out of it. So what you doing here? God is asking, what you doing here? That's the altar out there. Yeah. What you doing here? What you doing here? God is asking us, what are we doing here? In the places that are of darkness, in the places of the godliness that we're walking. I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. You sit there looking at me, keep on looking at me, keep on looking at me. God asked Elijah, what you doing here? What you doing here? Talking to some of us. What, what we're doing in the places? Why are we in some of the places that we're walking in? He said, go and stand on the mountain. And he did. And when he stood on the mountain, God passed by. And when the wind came to it, and it broke the rocks of the mountain. But God was not in it. God calls it the heaven, but God was not in it. But God was not in. Fire came down and started burning on the mountain, but God was not in. God told him not to go to the mouth of the cave. He covered in reverence because he did not want to look on the face of God. He was not worthy. And God began to talk to him in his still, small voice. He began to talk to him. This is when he talks to us. Do you think God is going to come? Amen. God, if you would just heal my body in a miraculous way, I'll believe in you. God ain't going to put God, if you would bring me out of all this debt, amen, and wipe my sleep clean, then I'll serve you. God ain't going to do it. God, if you make this man, amen, love me and treat me right, then I said, God ain't going to do that. If you make this woman, Lord, God, love me, amen, and appreciate me, then I'll come to church and I'll give God ain't going to do that. God is in the fact that his word said, be ye holy, for I, the Lord, your God is holy. Yeah, yeah. Whether I do anything for you or not, be ye holy. For I, the Lord, your God is holy. Amen. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. God is telling us, you must be born again. You must be born again. Regardless of the storms, the earthquakes, the fires in your life, you must be born again. Hear the voice of God. And God asked him again, What you doing here? You've been doing some stuff so long in the weak areas of your life. And God is asking me, What you doing here when I can't bring you out? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave, amen, Elijah a reprieve. 
because Elijah wasn't went in the wilderness before he got to the cave. He wasn't in the wilderness and he sat up under a juniper tree and he fell asleep. The angel of the Lord came and touched him, made a cake for him, and put a cruise of water at his head, told him to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Then, hallelujah, he went back to sleep. <laughs> God told you what to do. But then you're going back to sleep. He went back to sleep. The angel come up again and touched him. Told him to eat and drink. After he done that, that time, Elijah was going to do his own thing. He had made up in his mind what he was going to do. He was going north to the mouth of God, Mount Horeb. From the juniper tree to Mount Horeb was 180 miles. God didn't tell him to go to Mount Horeb, but God allowed him to go. Yes, he did. Yes, he to did. teach others a lesson that when God, amen, calls you, amen, he wants you to do what he wants you to do. He'll give you some grace and some mercy. And then it's something, amen, that when God allowed him to go, he went 40 days and 40 nights without eating or drinking nothing. You wonder why you're in a place right now, seems like you can't kill nothing and won't let die. Seems like you're hungry all the time. Seems like you can't get a gun. Seems like you can't kill nothing. Seems like ain't nothing going to happen. Seems like ain't nothing going to turn around. It's because you're in a fasting place in the wilderness. Go on to where God didn't send you to go. 40 days and 40 nights. There's only a few people that I know fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus did it. I believe Abraham or Moses did it. Elijah here is doing it. And he was traveling over rough terrain. He was a man that wore rough clothes. He knew how to survive in the wilderness. And he traveled 180 miles going to Mount Horeb to dwell in all to dwell in a cave. Only thing he got out of it was hearing from God. God told him to go right back where he was. <laughs> and not only that, he said he sent him, he sent him right back, amen, where he was and further. And he said, Anoint Jehu. I believe the next king of Israel. Anoint Elisha to take your place. And he told him to anoint somebody else, the next king of Israel. God did not take away the gift that he gave Elijah. Amen. I believe this is the only place where he anointed anyone. But he did give, amen, Elijah the understanding. Elijah the understanding. That what I called you to do, I meant for you to do it the first time. God is calling us to do stuff. Amen. And he ain't going to change, amen, to agree with what we want to do. We're going to have to change to do what he wants us to be. Yeah. We didn't call God. God called our kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. It's coming down a little bit up here. Yeah. We didn't call God. God called us. Yeah. Uh -huh. God didn't, amen, take a charge from us, but God gave us the charge. Amen. When God gave him the charge, he, met, he finally went and done what he was supposed to do. He had to get his mindset changed and go right back to the same place that he started from and then go further. When he done what God called him to do, the first thing, amen, I believe in verse 20, it says, he went and he found Elisha. When he found Elisha, Elisha was plowing behind 12 yoke of oxen. Uh -huh. There were, there were uh, 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 two, four, six, eight, ten, five yoke of oxen being plowed by other men in front of him. And he had, amen, the six double yoke of oxen, which was 11 and 12, and he was plowing following the other men. Uh -huh. And when he seen him, he passed by him. And the Bible says he cast his mantle upon him. Amen. Under the mantle anointing. When you, amen, amen, understand, hallelujah, that the mantle that God places on your life is not just, amen, for you to continue to walk in the same old areas, do the same old things, hang around the same old people. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Go 
Now God is putting a mantle anointing on your life for change. Amen. Because he's not going to call you to do the same old things amen, that you were doing before he put the anointing on your life. Amen. 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 So much so that when Elijah finally was called up to heaven, Elisha said, uh, Elijah said, what would you want me to do for you, Elisha? Elisha said, if you will, I want a double portion of your anointing. He said, well, if you see me when I grow up, hallelujah, and he cast his mantle down and he picked up the mantle of Elijah. And the Bible declared that Elijah got eight miracles, but Elisha got 16 miracles. Church up from the ground. We 
we had to start our own church, and we had to pay for our home, our own living, and we had to pay all the bills in the church. Because when the church members don't want to give tithes in that and offer, guess who has to take on the responsibility of the finances? The pastor and the co-pastor. Amen. Amen. We have to make sure everything is that hallelujah is paid for. Why? Because God placed the power on our lives. Hallelujah. Yes, Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And because people have never started nothing, they ain't prepared nothing, and they're not preserving nothing, they don't know how to do. Jesus. And they don't want to do. Amen. And they're not committed to do. Jesus. Amen. That's why we have to be careful what God places in our hands that we become good stewards over it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God ain't gonna give you more, amen, if you don't take care of what you already have. Amen. I said, God ain't gonna give you more if you don't take care of what you have. Amen. God is trying to bring something up. Elijah done eight miracles. Elisha done sixteen miracles. The first miracle I believe Elisha done. Amen. <laughs> Is he took authority. The sons of the prophets were standing on the mountain and they kept telling Elisha, God is going to come and take your master today. Mm. Elisha told him to shut up. Tell him that, shut up. I will not do that anymore. God saved me last week. And then you have to talk to your flesh and tell your flesh the desires of your flesh. Shut up. Shut up. Amen. When it calls for, and then when it wants, you got to tell it.
Methuselah was the oldest man in the Bible. And I think he was a thousand or something thereby. I got to thinking, how in the world was Elijah 3,500 years old? According to theologians. Begin to study and read it. Because in his spiritual man, he was translated over and over again. And I believe in the New Testament, he said, John the Baptist will come in the spirit of Elijah. It says in Revelation, in the New Testament, when the rapture has taken place, I believe, he said there's going to be two witnesses. One of them is going to be Elijah. Amen. So he's being translated over and over again. Hallelujah. And it says, then he's going to die. I believe for three days or three and a half years, I got to read that part. But it says God's going to raise him up again. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it says all the world is going to see this miracle. Because uh -huh. so we got CNN and we got all of this. Amen. Saints, when I seen that truck plow through all of those people, waited until it got close up on the people, probably from here to the road. And then he flew over. And he said he went a mile plowing through people. Yes. Plowing through people. Cops were shooting, going off. Said he had a truck full of ammunition. Killing and plowing through people. And the world seen it. And that's all they put in their own TV. They're going to be able to see this happen. This Elijah under the mantle anointing of Elijah. Done what he's seen Elijah do. If I have to live right, you got to live right. If I have to call a man mess out of my flesh, you have to call stuff out of your flesh. We serve the same God. Amen. Elijah asked Ahab, asked the people of Israel, how long are you going to be halted between two opinions? There ain't two gods, there's just only one God. How long are you going to serve this God? It's just a thing. How long? How long? God has given you grace. He's given you mercy. He's given us even grace and mercy. Read the story. Oh my God. Shabbat. See how King Ahaz is humbling himself before me? I will not take his life. I will not let everything that you prophesied on him to come in his generation or his lifetime. But I'll pass it over him and I'll let it come in his son's life. Don't you know the stuff we do, amen, is going to carry over to our children's lives. If we don't be careful, preparing, amen, hallelujah, for the new, yeah. if you live ungodly, you're still preparing amen. for your children to suffer destruction yeah. Yeah. that you should have got. Yeah. Amen. amen. My God. Told Jay, told him to go down in my clothing. Anoint Jay, he, the next king of Israel. It was time that last and passed by. 
Just a bit of a skill doing her stuff. But it come down to the point that Jehu, when he became king, he rode in the city. And he rode in the city with his mighty men. And it was just a bit up in the shop of his child, up in the tower. And he told him to go up and cast her down. They grew her out of the tower. And when she fell down, and the man had a leave, she Will not eat her hands, uh -huh. her feet, or her head. I believe that's what it's. It ain't everything else. But her hands, her feet, and her head was left right there. Oh. It was her husband, King Ahab, that hooked up with another king. He disguised himself because they were after him. And when they recognized in the battle that the other king was not Ahab, amen, they left him alone. Said, so my Ahab will disguise. You can hide yourself all you want to. You can disguise yourself all you want to. God still knows where you are. He said, an arrow came and it went between his arms and it struck him. Amen. He said, get me out of the battle. And as he was going out of the battle, amen, he bled so that he died. It was prophesied on Ahab. You had the ball killed and you took his vineyard. How did you have him killed? He said, get two prophets of all, two false prophets. Jezebel said, you can prop all you want to. It's going to come back. Amen. 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 Get two amen, false prophets and get all of Israel and get the ball in the middle amen, of all of Israel and get two lying prophets to amen, lie against him and say he brought from the king and God. It took him right out stone him. Time lapse. I think it'll have been here. When he bled in the chest, it was prophesied on him that the same place that the dogs licked up Nabal's blood, he may have they gonna lick your blood up to write these things the dogs. When he bled and died in the chariot, they took him and buried him. Blood was all in the chariot. It said the horseman that was running the chariot come right back to the same spot. Yeah. In this city where they took the ball out, an honest man, stoned him to death, and the dog with it. It said that the chariot washed the blood off of the chariot right there in the same spot. Amen. And the dogs licked the blood of King Ahab. Oh. Jesus. It doesn't matter, Sam. You can try to disguise yourself. You can try to hide yourself. You can try to plot in secret. Amen. God is calling for us to prepare ourselves. He's calling us to preserve the old and prepare for the new. Why? Because we're under the mantle of God. I hope you got something out of the word of God today. I hope you're still up with your mind. It's time we're going to turn the service into the hands of the